Uh-oh. Kidding me right now. Ah. I am not coming out here on YouTube trying to make a video and make a fool out of myself. She'll fire up, guys. So here's the situation. It's not gonna start. I think the Bendix is messed up. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. <laughs> I think right now is a good time maybe to go over something with you guys and that is life is, is gonna throw curveballs at you okay and and this is one of those times there's no reason to get upset things don't always work out the way you would like them to work out okay so don't you know don't get angry don't get upset if there's a problem you have in life just address it take care of it that's what I do and uh, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna repair the starter in this video and maybe next video uh, we can do the wood chipper guys okay so you know just Plan B, no big deal. Uh, let's get started. So we'll take this negative battery terminal off first. And why do I take the negative one off? Because on newer cars, and this is an old tractor, it probably doesn't matter. Newer cars, when you attach the positive battery cable back uh, to the battery, it'll it'll send a jolt, a shock of uh, electricity into the computer components and stuff like that and some t sometimes it damages them so they want you to put the negative one take the negative one on and off so think of electrical current as like a circle when you take that negative cable off it breaks that circle open it can't complete the circle and when that happens you won't get any sparks and things like that when you work on something most of the time the way to go is get the wires off first if you can get to them Sometimes there's cases on cars and stuff that you can't get to the wire, so you gotta unhook it and drag it down where you can reach it and all that. This one's pretty easy. And now on this starter, it has three bolts. One here, one here, and one here. I'll take those off. This piece right here, and it comes at, back and springs back is the Bendix, the starter Bendix. So I always wondered, because I hadn't repaired many starters, I always wondered, this is, has a spring. I can feel tension as I pull it out. It's got a lot of tension. So I always wondered, why doesn't this spring out and stay out? The spring should get weak over time, you would think. Uh, so it should rather stay out. You don't want to come out easier instead of harder. But now I'm noticing, as I've been tinkering with it, that sometimes this apparently has a one-way clutch of some kind in it. See, it locks this way. It's supposed to, it'll turn this way and it'll lock this way. Lock, see? Well, if you'll notice, look, right now it was spinning this direction. It's not supposed to do that. Oh, see? It keeps wanting to. See? It's wanting to turn this direction when it's not supposed to. It's only supposed to turn this way. That's what's wrong with it. That's why it goes, wing, wing, and it's not engaging into the flywheel. See? It's not supposed to be turning like that. It's supposed to be doing that. Not that, but that. Not that, but that. I'm going to take this starter apart to get this piece out, and I might be able to clean it or something. I don't know. I've never really messed with them. Let's take it apart and see what happens. I'm just gonna mark where this 
everything goes together, just make it easier. There we go. Now I can take it apart, line all the marks back up, just so it lines up right. And this part right here is a starter solenoid. And I know it's good because it keeps engaging the starter. You know, it's engaging the starter. I know this is spinning, even though it's not engaging. Uh, this is still, I can tell it's working. And this part simply comes out. You just raise it up and slip it out. There's like a fork in there that attaches to that. I don't know if it's necessary to take this solenoid off, solenoid off for this job, but I'm doing it anyways. I'm gonna see if I can slip this front part off. The back's wanting to come loose, but I'm wanting just this part off. Okay, and it's not going. I see why. There's a bolt hole here. What it is, I've gotta take these two out. These two uh, bolts. I maybe could have left those in. Again, I don't know what I'm doing, but we'll dig into it and we'll fix it. All right, I believe I was wrong. Those are short bolts. I'm not sure why this isn't coming off of here. I think I'm gonna smack it some more. I have no clue what's happening here, but now it's just, now it's loose. So there we go. And I'll show you what's got us hung up in there. So hopefully you can see it. There's a fork in there, right there, that engages the Bendix from the starter solenoid. Makes it flop like that. And it is, you know, stuck in there. I gotta figure out how to get it out. I think there's a bolt or something up here. So this is like a set screw and a nut, and I noticed the nut's already loose. Normally you would loosen this nut and then loosen the screw, but it's already loose, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just take it right out of there. Okay, and I hope that you guys are getting this. By doing that, it, really, it takes this fork loose from this housing, you see, that fits in there. And that's how we pull the nose of this thing off. So this part right here is the Bendix. So to get this off, you wanna tap this down. There's a spring ring in there. I'm just gonna tap it down. So now we'll take off this little metal ring, snap ring. Oh, she's tight. There's probably easier ways to do this. You guys can criticize me all you want. I don't care. Anyways, there it is. That's simple enough. Now this will just come right off, see? And you, if you'll notice that gear right there, that's what gets it to when it's working right. See how it keeps slipping? But that's what gets it to drive it out. All right. And so again, this thing should not roll both directions. So if I shake it, there, there, it's locked in right now, you see? That's what it's supposed to do. I wish I could show you guys in there. I know what it is, it's a bunch of flat roller bearings, and they're made, the cage makes it so it should only turn one way. Anyways, see how it's spinning? That's the, that's the issue I think we're having, and what I'm gonna do, I don't know if I can repair this, and if I can't, we're going to open it up, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. But maybe we can fix it. The only thing I think might be able to fix it is, it's got a lot of grease all over it and in it, and I just wonder if I can get it in there, uh, get something in there like gasoline or something, wash it all out, and see if I can get it to quit spinning this direction. It's supposed to this way, again, mind you, but not, not this way. And there you go. You can see it's locked in right now when I shake it. It's possible there's enough grease in there to cause that. Let's clean it out and try it. Hmm. 
here's the finished product. See how I turn it that way? And every time it's locking now. Spin, lock, spin, lock, spin, lock. That's what we want. What I'm gonna ask you guys to do now is put your imagination thinking caps on and uh, imagine me putting this back together in the reverse order that I took it apart and I'll get back with you when I got it back on the tractor and we'll test it. Okay, everybody, take your imagination caps off now. The starter has been reinstalled. And yes, that is duct tape. The seal was all cracked around the edge, so I just duct taped it up. Just want to keep dirt from getting inside of the starter. If this was a paying job, a customer job, you'd have to put a new seal on there. But this is my own junk, and I will do it the way I want to. The only thing I would have done differently, guys, on this starter, and I encourage you to do, is these two little bolts that I took out halfway out and put them back in and tightened them up. If I was you, if that happens to you and you do something like that, you really need to take it apart and look behind it and see if anything shifted inside of there and then tighten them back down. I'm taking a risk and I think it'll be all right. I know it's the brushes that are in there that I loosened up and I, I think that it's gonna be all right. Anyways, battery's all hooked up. Let's give it a shot. And guys, this is gonna be the very first time trying to start it since I put it on, no joke. So I'm excited to see what happens just as much as you are. So here we go, the moment of truth. And nothing. Rat. Whoa. -oh. I forgot to hook the battery cable up, guys. See that? It was sparking against the, the tractor. I'm getting old. Let me loosen this nut up, throw it on there. All right, guys, battery's all hooked up. I decided to approach this at a different angle trying to start it. That way, if it starts, you'll see the big smile on my face. If it doesn't, you'll see a look of disappointment. So if you love me or you hate me, uh, you can see how this turns out. And you can be happy or sad for me. Let's try it. Oh! Let's try it again. See, and the issue is the Bendix isn't sticking anymore. Look. I'm letting it shut off. I mean, it would start. I'll turn the fuel off. Fuel back on. I believe it's fixed. So there you have it all fixed, guys. And some of you may be wondering, where'd that grease come from? How'd that grease get in that roller clutch of that starter Bendix? And that's from the, that's from the clutch uh, throwout bearing. You can grease that. It's got a grease fitting on it. I must have had too much grease on it. It slung it in there, got it on the starter. And that's what happened. That's why I had that grease in there. Guys, what's the moral of the story here? And the moral of the story is very simple. Don't buy parts just because they make them. Okay, if you can fix something, fix it. Musty One would be proud of me right now because I repaired this. I didn't hang parts on it. And guys, that's what a lot of us need to learn to start doing. Uh, you could have took this starter and had it rebuilt and they would have put a new Bendix in it. You could have bought a new Bendix, you know, or whatever. But the best way to approach things is an attitude to where I can fix this. I don't have to buy parts. I can fix this. Thanks for coming along, guys. I think before we do any wood chipping, I got a few more repairs to do on this old tractor, some leaks that need to be fixed. Let's just go ahead and make videos on that, get this thing in top-notch shape, then hook it to the wood chipper. That way it'll be dependable and we can make uh, homesteading videos. So thanks for tuning in to the Kentucky Yankee channel and we'll see you next time, guys.